So welcome to the end of the 2039 season. My name is Paul, also known as the Northman. If you are new here, thank you for joining me for this episode of Build a Nation in the Fair Islands. If you haven't, please go down and subscribe to the channel. I think it's something like 70% of people watching this channel are not actually subscribed. Blows my mind. Go subscribe, please. Thank you very much. Drop a like on it. Make sure you do comment below. Let me know your views on how this is going. It really does help me know if the content is good. It helps me know if you are enjoying it. It helps me know what I should improve. So please go down and comment below. So we're going to start reviewing. You join us on the 15th of July. We're going to start looking at the European rankings. So we've actually dropped a place. We've dropped down in terms of our top flight down to 30th in the in um, the European rankings, just behind the um, Israeli second. Sorry, Israeli top flight. So quite disappointed that we have dropped down. Hopefully, it's a little blip and we can start pushing on again. But very disappointed to say that we've actually dropped down in the rankings. Um, in terms of ourselves personally, we've rose up the rankings, up to 61st in the European Club rankings, moving up 15 places, which I'm very, very pleased with. Coefficient-wise, we are still in 24th. Um, we will be on 22.125 points at the next season so far, and that would actually see us stay exactly where we are. So it is all about performance this year if we want to try to overtake like to Switzerland, who we are only less than half a half a point behind them at the minute. So jumping forward to 20 games into the season, 118 drew two. We really are dominating the league this year. And I feel like in terms of how we perform, and it's one of our best seasons in terms of general performance. I do want to see a little bit more from the players, but I feel like I will always be looking to push them as far as we can. We have gone through in Europe, so very comfortably, to be honest, we've got ourselves into the group stage. Um, Nixick, we beat 3-0 um, at home with uh, Miss Shannon Holman on scholarship for 3-0 victory away from home. Conrad getting all three. Our Polish strike, we have nicknamed now Conrad because I couldn't pronounce his last name. Uh, Astana, 2-0 victory at home before a comfortable 0-0 away from home. And then we played Slovan Bratislava, so we had a fairly easy run through to the group stage of the Champions League. 3-0 victory before a 3-1 victory at home, so I was go through 6-1 on aggregate on the final qualifying round. And we go into the Champions League group phase up against um, Admira Wacker from, um, Salz from Salzburg, <laughs> from Austria, uh, Copenhagen, Man United, Lyon, Brighton and Brescia we're going to be playing on this review and then we've also got Dortmund and Leverkusen after the winter break. Now it is nice how we've got through into the Champions League group phase because in terms of a season so far I've never lost as many players as we've lost this season. So let's start reviewing what's happened since you last with us then. So first off our left back um, Svan Emsley, the young Norwegian who we signed last year. We've ended up selling him. We have gone back on loan from Chelsea, but we sold him for six and a half million plus 50% of next sale, and they agreed to loan him back for the rest of the season. So only 19 years old, we've lost him six and a half million plus 50% of next sale, so it could rise to a huge amount of money if they end up selling him. Uh, John Anderson has gone to 1860 Munich. Again, a player I didn't really want to lose because he was an option as halfback, but we've let him go for a million plus 50% of next sale. Um, Rune Egelin, our Norwegian right winger, 22 years old now, been with us since 2036. We sold him for 5 million plus 50% of next sale. So we are getting a lot of clauses in on these big sales. And if that player moves on for 10, 15 million, then we know we can cash in and we are going to get good money back there. So I'm, I don't want to lose these players, but um, Svav, Svav, I'll be happy if him go because I can't pronounce his name. But um, Carson Tobias, he's gone because he wanted to leave. And same with Eglin, I rejected deals first. They came back and complained. So we have ended up letting them go. A um, couple has gone out on loan. Uh, Vucic has gone on loan. HJK never really broke into our team. He is on a high wage, the Norwegian. Contract is running out, so we're probably just going to let him leave. And also Juan Carlos Chavez we sold. Now, I actually like this guy. He was a great rotation. Joined us last year, so he only played 37 games for us. You can see he joined us in 2038. 
Um, so he played 21 games in the first season, 16 so far this season. We have sold him for two and a half million, plus 50 percent of next sale, and we managed to get him back on loan as well. So players coming in then, Swamsley is coming on loan. Um, Chavez is coming on loan. Now we've signed a player from Cardiff City, Oscar Mortensen. Now the reason we brought back our goalkeeper at the age of 28 is that our young academy goalkeeper has the most stinking attitude you're ever going to meet. He has basically been complaining because Copenhagen came in for him. Now one thing we need to accept is our league is ranked 30th in the world. Sorry, in Europe, which means when these big clubs are coming in from bigger leagues, players' heads are getting turned, and we've just got to accept it. We've just got to keep recycling, keep moving, and keep doing what we can do. So it looks like we're going to lose our goalkeeper. So I managed to bring back our goalkeeper. So he was with us since 2027. We saw him 2039, 2.7 million to Cardiff. He's gone on loan to Cardiff. Uh, sorry, on loan. He's gone to Cardiff for a few years. We managed to bring him back for a million. He's only 28, 74 caps with Fair Islands. I'm just delighted to bring him back. He was always a very solid keeper for us, and he's come back for £1 million. Pounds. I think it's a good deal because I do expect by the end of the window we will have sold our keeper. Then obviously Chavas as well has come in on a loan. And the only other player to look at who's come in since um, the last episode is Henry Nielsen Lostein, 27-year-old Faroe Islands defender. Came through the Liverpool Academy, if you remember years ago, we looked at him when he got some appearances very early on in the save. Well, he has come in to be a defender for our B team. He's not going to feature in the first team, I don't think. He has come in as an option in our B team, and I think it's a good addition to the team at the age of 27 to play for the B team, surrounded by a load of youngsters who we try and develop. So jumping forward youth intake, I'm fairly confident we might have a few gems here. So first off, um, Josvain Lervik, a goalkeeper, 16 years old, he's 6 foot. He looks a decent goalkeeper. He does look decent. I'm interested to see how he develops. Got central midfielder here, Bergen Johnson. Again, looks very talented. As a basic central midfielder, I think he's a decent player. I don't think as a Mazzalo he's decent because he's dribbling. But as a basic central midfielder, he could maybe develop into something nice. You've got Yanis Paulsen here, who again looks a fairly solid defender. You've got a striker here in Han Hannes Schurderson. I feel like I nailed it. He looks really talented. I'm interested how he's going to develop. You've got Paul Ellie Valheim, who again looks a very good striker. Again, interested how he's going to develop. We've got Patrick Jakobsen, who looks okay as a winger. You've got another defender here who looks very solid. Good team player, good hard-working player. I think he could be decent. Um, there's there's just a few to look at. You've got this guy here who, again, it looks like a very solid striker. So in terms of intake, I think we have a very good intake. It says he's below average. I completely disagree with that. Now, no more signings came in, but we did lose a few more players. So first off, Holbro went on loan and Benson went on loan as well. Two players to other clubs within our league. Um, Benson was a rotation option for the first team, but he was never going to properly break into the first team, so I've let him go on loan to Vesta within our league. Our goalkeeper did end up leaving 1.8 million, which isn't a lot of money, plus 50% of next sale. Now, he is only 18. There's a chance he might come back in the future. Obviously, an academy player, so if he does come back, he would class as homegrown, which is always a positive. But he's gone off to Copenhagen. Maybe he won't feature for them, get upset and come back. I am starting to sniff around and look at players who potentially could come back to the club who have left over the last few years. Before we get further on in the video, who do you think we may be looking at signing? Because there will be a couple at the end of this episode as a spoiler. Now also going now, Rasmussen went out on loan to Vesta and Arja went on loan, sorry, went on sale to Vikinger Goethe and also Erdegaard, whose contract was running out. He agreed to go to Greenwich Firth and we've ended up actually saying you could sign him now for 100 grand, which they took the deal. So he's left us. 
but like I say, no signings have come in. So some awards now the season has ended, and we've got an average attendance of 14,029, which is insane. First season in the new 15,000 capacity, insane. We have 14,000 people in the Fairlands coming out to watch us play. Uh, Daniel Holman won Fair Islands Player of the Year. Fair play to him. It still blows my mind we picked him up on a free transfer. Um, 2036, we got him on a free. He went a load of EB first, got some football, showed me he could do it. And since then, he's been knocking in goals for our first team. Um, Holman's also got best rookie in the league as well, so congratulations to him. We won Manager of the Year, which we have completely dominated since 2022. So fair play to me there. Um, in terms of players named in the best team of the year, um, Wolf on the right wing for KI was on loan from Michelin. He is actually joining us on a free transfer at the end of the season. So he got into the Faroe Islands team of the year. He is now going to come and play in the Faroe Islands again as a fringe player for us. So not guaranteed first team football, but I've actually been trying to sign him since here when he went on loan to Shiva so better late than never so it is a few years later before we managed to sign him but I feel like he's a good signing uh, Christopherson weirdly they are due to release him he's just become available to play for the national team so he is also going to get cap for us because as a centre midfielder he's actually better than what we've got um, so he is going to become a fair rounds national team player and he's going to actually get released by them uh, Stephenson up front alongside Holman so we did get quite a few players in there um, so goalkeeper of the year was our goalkeeper who's gone to Copenhagen Michael Meng won defender of the year Michan won midfielder of the year and Holman won striker of the year now I am trying to do these recaps like this to hopefully mean that um, I don't miss out on anything and forget to tell you anything um, I purposely made this little save file to come back at this moment I have waited if we go back, he only has to be in the country two years to become a Fair Islands international. So I've waited since 2035 for Cookie to get his work permit. He's been awaiting paperwork for four seasons. Still been a very solid rotation player for us. Very, very solid rotation player. Finally got the ability to play for the Fair Islands national team at 24. Bear in mind, he's only 24. He's been with us for one, two, three, four, five, six. This is his seventh year at the club and he's only 24. But um, yeah, finally got a chance to play for the Fair Islands and he rejected the chance. <laughs> he, he rejected the chance. Just, <sighs> I've waited and waited for him to become a Fair Islands national and he doesn't want, he doesn't want to play. Oh. Now, I was so proud of this. Benef Benfica lead European top league development, play development. Um, Benfica have produced the most footballers currently earning a living playing in the top divisions in Europe. Now, Benfica have 85 players in the top flight clubs across the continent. We are third. We are third. A team from the Faroe Islands is in third place. And even more shocking almost... A team from Iceland, a team from Iceland is in sixth. I mean, I'm th I'm thinking maybe I need to start scouting some of these players. A straight away, straight away we need to get on scouting some of these players from Iceland. Because maybe there's a couple who can end up coming to us early. And they also count as, count as our players after being there for three years under 21. But then from then on, you know, we've got to consider these things. Okay, so we are back for the end of season review. Let's start with the league then, which we did win again. Won 24, drew 3, lost none. So that's an unbeaten season here. Uh, really, really pleased. 100 goals scored, only 6 goals conceded. 2 against EB, Vesto 1, B36 1, Vikinger Goethe 1 and KI 1. Now, after losing two games last season and conceding 13 goals, I'm delighted that we've gone unbeaten and only conceded six goals this season. It does show that our tactic is working very well. Now, tactic is very solid. KI came in second. TB got up into third. And in fourth place was Vikinger Goethe. Now, in terms of the second tier, I can announce that our B team 
team won the league again. Did concede a goal. Sorry, did lose a game. Conceded 11. Conceded double figures. But another league title for the B team. The B team now has won the league every single year since 2023, which is just insane because at 2023, we weren't the best team in the Fair Islands. Yeah, we already started developing enough youth that our B team started dominating. Um, absolutely insane. Really, really proud of them there. Now, we did win the cup, beating our B team in the final. So, regained that. So, we did win the treble again. I think it's our fourth year in a row winning the treble. A 4-1 victory in the final with uh, Sundstrom getting two, Holman and Chavez on the score sheet. Now, Sundstrom is definitely a player I want to point out. I want to praise. I want to congratulate. Um, joined us in 2035 for just under a million as a 17-year-old. Never really broke in as a first-choice player, but since we lost Engelin, our right winger, to um, Stuttgart, he has been playing as our first-choice right winger, and he has been insane. Very, very good. Now, stat-wise, only one goal and one assist does make me question it, but in terms of his overall play, I've been genuinely pleased with how he's done. Now, if he doesn't start producing in terms of assists and goals, maybe I need to reevaluate this. But from watching the games visually, I'm pleased with how he's been doing. I really am. Looking at this, I've got to maybe question it. That is a bit of an issue. But it's these situations where when you're watching the games, like he's been good. Then I've got to come on and tell you guys how good he's been. And you kind of think, well, hang on, he's not been good, Paul, because he's not got any goals or assists. So if we're going to the European run then, it's been a very weird Champions League run so far. So first off against Admira, we lost at home 1-0 and I honestly thought we should have beat them. Honestly thought. Before we went to Copenhagen and got a 3 all draw. Got to be pleased with that. Then we played Man United at home and got a 1-1 draw. Back-to-back -back draws, a draw against Man United, I'm delighted. Then we follow up with another draw, drawn against Leon, away from home. Now, at this point, we've just drew against Man United and Leon, and Copenhagen away as well, so you've got to be happy. If we'd have just beaten Admira, I'd have classed it as an insanely successful Champions League run so far. Then, we went to England, went to the South Coast, went to Brighton, who were in the Champions League, and beat them... 2-1. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <sighs> then we lost against Brescia 2-0. It's been so up and down in the Champions League. Am I happy? Am I not? I think I've got to be happy that we've won one, drew three and only lost two. We are still at that point where we are very close to starting again to these knockout rounds. We're very close to a couple of them draws being wins and us being around this 10 to 14th place, to be honest with you. And at that point then, we really do start improving. We really do start attracting players and really do start looking very, very strong. Now, if we look at our team for this season, and our top goal scorer was Holman with 34 goals. Mid Skuga managed to get over 20 goals this season from the left wing, 22 goals. Conrad picked up 19, uh, Michan got double figures with 12, and Kilberg managed to get 12 goals. Now, Kilberg has played 10 games in the league this year, and one start, three sub appearances in the Champions League. I am starting to give him more football, because no matter what happens, no matter how many different players we look at, no matter who we look to bring in and sign and improve the team with, this man, since 2029, has been an ever-present success. 10 league games this season, 11 goals, 10 assists. Now, talking about assists, our 17, well, 18-year-old now, Paul Endre Tobjornsson Sterler managed to get the most assists in the team with 13. And he's only 18 years old now, and he just looks an absolute beast an absolute beast really really pleased now what i would say 
is I'm actually disappointed with overall how many assists our team got. 11 from uh, Ekstrom, who wasn't even the first choice player. 15 starts, 13 sub appearances, but finished second highest assists on that left wing. We need to improve going in next season. Um, it's been another disappointing season as an attacking midfielder for Eran Michan. 29 starts, 12 goals, 7 assists. I don't know what to make of him. One and a half million cost. First season, 11 games, 5 goals, 4, 5 assists. Second season, 18 games, 4 goals, 10 assists. 14 games, 5 goals, 1 assist in 14 games in the league. This season, 5 assists. 5 assists. 9 goals and five, 4 of them were penalties. It's tough. It's tough. He's one of our he's one of our highest earners. He's one of our highest earners. Attribute wise, he's one of our best players. But I just think I just think he's lost his ability to play in this team. I really do. Um thirty six percent shots on target, eighty four percent pass accuracy, etc. It's just not been the best. He's not been the best. Um, attacking output then. He is here. Now, look at Kilberg. So, open play, expected assists. Kilberg is here. Non-penalty XG in 90 minutes. Kil look at... You have the whole league. Then you have Kilberg over here on his own. Mishan is here. He's miles ahead. Shooting for midfielders. Look at the top. Kilberg again. Expected goals per shot. He's again, he's doing all right. This guy as well keeps popping up. Scoring for midfielders. Shall we all guess who this one is? It's Kilberg. Right, passing for midfielders. So, pass completion. Highest is up at 90%. Uh, passes attempted per 90 minutes. If Kilberg is up there, it, it's asking questions. So this is Omar Al Fituri, who is our defensive midfielder, who has been a solid halfback this year. Patrick Christensen, who's been a deep line playmaker. Chavaz, who's been on loan, and Levang, our other deep line playmaker. So I guess the question is, where does Kilberg fit in comparing? Okay, he's actually not showing up anywhere here, is he? Where is Kilberg? I don't actually... He doesn't seem to be pop. I'm, I'm almost happy, to be fair. I'm, to, be, to be honest, I'm almost happy. Um, it's a tough call. Because I actually would like next season to om have Omar Ali Fittori as our halfback. I think he's just been absolutely solid as a rock. And again, if we go into the player performance, defending-wise as a midfielder, he is here in terms of clearances and blocks per 90 minutes. Um, you do have two players there. Um, tackling as a midfielder. He's been in and around in terms of tackles. One ratio is quite low, but tackles attempted isn't the most either. Physical output, he's been doing a lot more. High intensity sprints and distance covered. Um, so he's doing solid as a rock defensively, but nothing crazy. Solid, but nothing crazy. But if we look at the passing side of things, and um, passes completed, passes attempted, he's up as one of the highest. Passing progression, in terms of pass completion rate to progressive passes, he's quite high as well. And possession-wise, he's quite low in terms of possession lost. Um, but possession won, he's up at 15. So he's not the highest in terms of possession won, but possession lost, he's one of the lowest. So technically, we want someone who's like here. Somebody around here. So, I mean... Technically, in terms of players, you can see frequent wins ball, reliable in possession. Technically, it's the best. I just would like him a bit higher. I would like him a little bit higher, but I guess if we're not defending as much, he's not going to win the ball as much. But either way, I would like him maybe as a halfback, and that would then move our central mid, Christensen, into an actual central midfield position on support, where I think he could do a good job. 
And that would probably mean Turbio and Sterler moving up into the advanced midfielder on support role because, again, I think he could do a good job. And honestly, I think that could end up pushing Mishan out. The only other option there is to move Sterler over onto the wing as a winger on support, not on attack, and just have another creative player. But does Mishan play well enough that we deserve to move Sterler out of his favourite position? I don't think so. I don't think so. In terms of coefficient-wise, how we're looking compared to the start of the season, we got 3.5 points. No, we are the next one up. So we got 4.75 points so far, moving us next season on 26.875, which is going to guarantee us at the minute overtaking Switzerland. Um, no teams behind us are going to overtake us, but Israel are catching us. If, if... We can pick up some points. If we can pick up some points in the last two Champions League games, we could we could overtake Slovakia as well. That would move us up into 22nd, potentially. Potentially. Now, we do have a 4.0 season to go next year. Um, but the season after that, we're losing a 7.875, so we need to step up. We need a successful... Champions League run in the next two years or we might end up dropping down to 26th, 27th again. Now the final thing to show you is that I have arranged some transfers for the start of next season. Um, I'm going to give the spoilers on them. So coming back to the club is Ahmed Omar. Our right back who we signed from Gothenburg for 1.8 million before selling the Copenhagen for 2.8 million. Um, very solid right back, very hard work and mentally and physically good. Joined us for 1.6, rising to 3.2 on a rotation contract. We were weak at right back when we had injuries. And the, also, the other thing to point out is that um, Linderwood wants to leave as long as we get a 3.6 million bid because some Premier League clubs were coming in for him. So if we do end up losing him, we've already agreed that Omar's coming in. If we keep hold of Linderud, we have a rotation squad now. So when we do have Champions League and League games, we have two high-quality right-backs now with the club. Um, I've agreed this defender coming in. Colombian, 17 years old, Henry Pereira. Six foot two and looks solid as a rock. Really excited to bring him in. He's going to play for our B team for a few years and just see how he does. But I think he has potential. Join this one I'm excited about. So we lost our left back. We've had him back on loan for the rest of the season. But we are now are replacing with our former captain, Henry Hansen, is coming back to the club. 53 caps from Fair Islands, 24 years old. He's just a solid left back. Obviously joined us when he was only 16. Was with the club for quite a few years. Ended up selling for 3.6 million. I'm so excited to bring him back. But that is two players who were closing in on their mid-20s coming back so we're just adding a bit of a bit of almost experience to the club as well so really pleased to sign him and um, a couple of players coming a youngster here Morales a great time two years ago he's coming in when he turns 18 and we've already looked at that Ken Wolf, who's going to be joining us after being a KI this season and the final exciting sign you can see behind my head you can't see his name being seized from Genoa for 1.9 million Robin Lidlskare is coming back to the club. Now, after we signed him from odds for 2.6 million, he scored an absolute boatload of goals for us before we sold him for 10.5 million to Genoa. A couple of years later, we're going to sign back for 1.9 million, and we are getting 50% of that sale. But he scored 89 goals for us when he was last at the club. So I'm absolutely delighted at 24 years old, he's going to be coming back. And again, that's us adding just that little bit more experience instead of signing another 17, 18 year old. He is going to come in as our first choice striker. And the reason behind that is after one year, I've decided probably Conrad's going to be let go. I do think we have an option of playing as a shallow striker, but we are also in the position where we're trying to decide if um, Sterler will move in that attack in mid. If we do sell Michan. Maybe we keep Conrad. But oh, I just want to see Mishan succeed in attacking mid. I really can't decide what to do. I can't say more because I don't know what to do at this point. Um, I might end up just holding on to them all and only selling if clubs come in for them. 
because our squad isn't the deepest at the minute, so we can see what we decide to do. Um, looking at the national team, then, it's been a very upsetting season. Um, if we go on to the schedule side, I do want to just point out that Carrie Johnson, our experience now, 32-year-old with 109 caps, he's played with me as the manager, has just retired from international duty, age 32. It's not been a successful season. We lost 3-0 away to Sweden, then 6-3 to Romania. Draws against Georgia before beating Armenia in a friendly. We then drew against Finland at home before losing at home to Sweden 1-0. Got beat by Romania 3-0 before beating Georgia 2-1. Kilberg red card, by the way. We then lost 3-0 to Finland and then have just ended with a 5-1 demolition against Kazakhstan. It was upsetting because we actually rose up to 125th in the rankings, but we dropped down to 131st now. Um, I did bring in a couple of youngsters to have a look at them. Um, this young kid, 16-year-old, who we saw, who came through our academy this year, I've capped already. So six, three caps already for the Fairlands. I just wanted to see how he would do. Um, we were already out of the qualifying at that point, and I just wanted to give him a go. Um, them kind of players are going to get dropped out going into um, the new campaign. I just, I just wanted to see how we would do. And we're still desperately looking for a defensive midfielder. I have been using this Dijoni Hansen, who actually came through our academy, but he's been around a little bit since then, playing for B36 and NSI. He's been getting a bit of footballs out defensive midfielder, but he's just not good enough. We're we lacking in some positions, and I might over the winter have a complete overhaul remove quite a few players and just really do a full scouting mission of our our domestic league and see if we can find a defensive mid who maybe can step up but i'm fairly sure there isn't any because i know quite a lot of the players who play in the league because obviously been managing in this league now for what since 23 so it's 15 16 seasons so it's not been the most successful season, but we're pushing on. Uh, Jonsson has still been sold as Rock, 28 years old now. I did try to sign him as a potential right-back, but he's just valued so high. Playing at Roma now, um, last club Cologne. He is a proper top-flight player, so fair play to him, to be fair. Henry Hansen coming back to us, obviously 53 caps, age, um, age 24. Delighted he's going to be joining us. Um, Freud Gutterson's been playing a little bit more for the... For the A B team this year as well. Um I've just been trying to rely on players who have not let me down in the past. That's why Kilberg came back in for the club side as well. Um I'm just trying to find the right balance with club and country at the minute. Um the facilities did upgrade to excellent. I've not been able to upgrade them since, so hopefully we can do that soon. But yeah, that's been another season, 2039 season. Hopefully you're enjoying it as much as I am. We are closing in now. We've got 16 titles, I think. Uh, 24 there for HB. So we are only 8 behind the biggest, I think, at the minute. Yeah, we're 8 behind the best in the country. So we're closing in on being the most successful club ever in the Faroe Islands. If we go on to the Hall of Fame... In fact, actually, someone asked game status... 13 days, 6 hours and 4 minutes it's took us. So, we're pushing on. We're pushing on. We're not doing bad. Um, they think I should include Football Manager on my CV as well. It's probably a fair point. Probably a fair point. Uh, if we go on to the Hall of Fame we are looking for, um, we are still quite far down because our league has so little reputation. But 16 league titles, 13 domestic cups because it doesn't count some of the cups. Um, we've gone to nationality wise. We are the the best ever Fair Islands um, by a long way, by an absolute long way. Um, if we go into the nation as well, we are absolutely smashing that as well. So in terms of the Hall of Fame with that kind of thing, we are doing quite well. Um, here we are still so far off because our league just doesn't have any points really. We need technically to win something with the Fair Islands or win the Champions League would probably boost us up quite far as well. To be fair. But yeah, thanks for watching. I've been Paul, also known as the Northman. This is the 2039 season, and I'm still loving the save.